Well, to summarize, every patient needs an operation in the beginning or between the third and fourth cycle. Every patient needs germline testing as recommended by ASCO, NCC, and the SGO. Definitely germline bracket, but probably a panel. Many patients maybe even need somatic testing because somatic testing will be part of the opportunity to use maintenance elaborate. You got to have a BRCA mutation to use maintenance elaborate once it's approved very soon. And then in the absence of that, you have bevacizumab, which may or may not be used, but I think more and more we're using is the backbone every three week carboplatin paclitaxel with less intraperitoneal chemotherapy and, and less dose dense weekly. The only thing that we didn't talk about really is HIPEC. Mm -hmm. So, so HIPEC Frontline was, was published, as you know, from, from uh, the Netherlands in the New England Journal uh, that, that showed an underwhelming PFS, but a surprisingly disproportionate overall survival. So is, is HIPEC something that we need to think about, or is the pendulum going to swing and we're just waiting? So, I, so, I, so I, I'll uh, comment about HIPAC, but I also want to, again, reiterate to, and, and add on to something that you've mentioned mm -hmm. already, is that you say it's important to see a surgeon. I think it's important to mention that surgeons should be a like you, a gynecologist, yeah, because I think that the Thank audience, that. It, it's really important. It's not just a general right. surgeon or a, gynecologist. or a gynecologist. It's a gynecologic oncology surgeon. And it's important because if, more, if, if we're using more neoadjuvant chemotherapy, my fear, and I've seen this before um, in second opinions, where the patient is started on chemotherapy. And then sees a surgeon, and that's counterproductive. Or uh, goes through six cycles of chemotherapy. And that's counterproductive. And never sees a surgeon. Or never sees a sees clinical. Because has a great response. Or never sees a center that has a clinical trial, but right. that's a missed right. opportunity. Right. So um, high pet. High pet, yes. So um, at, at Dana-Farber and the Brigham, one of our surgeons has a particular interest um, Michael Worley in doing HIPEC. So we've agreed that he would um, see approximately 10 patients. He would be trained on doing HIPEC um, and then kind of report back to us what, what his results were, what the toxicities have been. Because in that paper, yes, there was a survival benefit, but there was also a considerable um, toxicity benefit, not surprisingly given the intraperitoneal cisplatinum um, that's given, the heated in intraperitoneal cisplatinum. And the best opportunity, at least as published in that January 2018 New England Journal mm -hmm. paper, is at the time of interval debulking. So HIPEC, right. it, currently as we understand it, is not, oh, I have fourth recurrence of ovarian cancer, Correct. so let's, right. let's, cut, let's cut her open and try right. to wash some chemotherapy. Right. HIPEC, the, the, the best opportunity is you're gonna do neoadjuvant surgery, chemotherapy and interval debulking anyways. Mm -hmm. So you're already in there, and you've selected the patient that's very chemotherapy sensitive, and now you're trying to leg up and, and do a little better. Yeah. Correct. Are you doing HIPEC in Alabama? We're not, and um, although there's been discussions about doing it, my, my personal f uh, view of it is if, if we end up doing it, we should do it in a clinical trial setting. I think so. To actually ask a question. So see. it's not standard. Exactly, and, and if you go back to look at the New England Journal paper, it's a small study, a relatively yes. small study. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, I think it's wonderful they did it because it's not easy, but it's a very fairly small study. I think we need a confirmatory study before we would adopt that, you know, widely. It is toxic too.